And we are live. Welcome, everybody, to the Monday call. We do this every other Monday. This is part of MOA's free group coaching thing that we do where anybody who's like considering joining MOA or just curious about it, we do a Q&A for three hours. This is where people can come on. The thing that we do different from other people is that we, instead of other people doing Super Chat on YouTube, I know a lot of you guys are watching us on YouTube, we actually let you guys we let you guys talk to us live in person and we do uh, Q and A's in person. So that's one of the things that I, I really want to, uh, one of the things I feel like this generation is missing is that you guys are really good at, at uh, sneak dissing people on fucking Twitter, but you're not really good at talking face to face. So that's one of the things that we're going to do on these, um, on these live calls. Also, this is also a skill set. Being able to talk on camera is a skill set. It's a skill set that we talk about in MOA. It's called watching yourself on camera. It's one of the modules that we make and we go over specifically how you're supposed to do that with the lighting and whatnot, this is how you're going to be getting a job in the future. A lot of times you guys don't even know, this may be how you you know meet a girl on a date, like after you meet her on Tinder in the future, it's going to be up for stuff like this. So make sure you guys, make sure you guys are doing that. Make sure you guys are checking uh, this out and learning how to, uh, to talk uh, face to face on camera. All right, cool. So here's what I need you guys to do because there's a lot of like really creepy trolls that jump on these Monday calls. Cause these are free and open to everybody. I can't let anyone unmute themselves until I ask you to. Normally, I would just let you do that. So not everyone can unmute themselves until we ask you to do that. But what I need you to do, for those of you who are new to the call, maybe you've never been on one of these before, I need you to go down at the bottom where it says reaction on your Zoom, and you're going to see one of the reactions is raise hand. I need you guys to click the raise hand button so I can call on you. Those of you who are not in Men of Action, I'm going to call on you guys in the first hour. Those of you guys who are in Men of Action, I'm going to call on you in the second hour. Uh, and then those of you who are in MOA Advance, I'm going to call on you in the third hour. Although we can kind of mix it up in the second hour. We can get to those questions. But in the first hour, I like to get to guys who are not in MOA. A couple things that are coming up. Number one, uh, I'm interviewing Justin Ross Lee right after this. So in about four hours, JRL is going to come on my show for the second time. Uh, we are going to do Access Vegas on Thursday. As of right now, it looks like we're going to have uh, Sergio Solis from Purple Pill Podcast is going to be on there. And Sharp from No Jumper is going to be our male guests. I don't know which girls that we're going to have on the show. But we're going to actually have, you know, eight to 10 girls on the show as well. Uh, coming up the following week on the 25th, as of right now, unless we reschedule it, I'm going to be on whatever podcast. On the 26th, I'm going to be hosting the pre preliminary for Swimsuit USA's Miss Southern California bikini competition. And on the 27th will be Babes in Toyland Support Our Troops, which is going to be, I believe, at Avalon. If you guys are anywhere near Los Angeles, trust me, you do not want to miss that. That is going to be incredible. OK, on the 28th, the morning of the 28th, a bunch of us who went to Babes in Toyland are going to get on airplanes and get in our cars and we're going to drive north on I-15 to Las Vegas, in which case I will be hosting the second round of the Girls of Summer Bikini Competition for $60,000 at Wet Republic. The last time, I don't know if you guys saw that, we broke a record. We had 45 girls compete for 10 spots. So the top 10 girls cannot compete this week. So we're going to have a new group of girls come in there and compete. Also, any one of you who is on this call, you don't have to be a member of MOA. You can come to Babes and Toilet. You can come to the bikini competition. You don't have to be a member of MOA to do those things. But those are places where a lot of guys from MOA come together and we work on our networking. We work on our skill set. We work on our communication in real life. So in MOA, remember, we don't talk about it. We be about it. So we're going to get to some questions. I already have two hands raised right now. The rest of you guys raise your hands. Um, Thank you, man. I put uh, Gillian says bikini comp was sick, 100% worth it. I really appreciate that. Also, Eric Sandoval put in the free school server for any of you. There's no excuse for you guys not to be in the free school server. All the, the calendar for all these events is in the free school server. The Instagram testimonials is in the free school server. The, the uh, book list is in the free school server. And most importantly, the first four steps of MOA, the free course that I put is in the free school server. The Eric Sandoval posted that right there. Um, let me see here. Anybody else? Uh, yeah. One other thing that we like to do for those of you who are new to MOA, we like to, and I, I'll do this for myself right now. Okay. We like to make your name, your Instagram handle, your Instagram handle, plus what city you're from. So my Instagram handle, uh, and then I'm in Las Vegas. So you can see guys, I just, I, uh, I just changed my name to at Michael Sartain, Las Vegas. So I, we like everyone at MOA to change your your name to your Instagram handle. And then what city you're from. If your Instagram handle is some weird shit, that tells you you need to change your Instagram handle to something that's a little bit more normal. Having a weird fucking IG handle is one of the first things we talk about in MOA. It doesn't help you very much. Okay, beautiful. Good. Got some more hands raised. We're going to get this thing started. Let me make sure we are still going uh, wild on uh, on YouTube. I see. The, okay, people are, are piling into the YouTube right now. Uh, what's going to happen is I don't think it's going to be a problem today. But if we ever get to an issue where there's more than 99 guys on the um 
on the uh, the Zoom, then the rest of you guys, the overflow goes to YouTube. Most people like to be kind of ninja watchers, so they don't really like to get on here and put their face on camera. So we always have more guys watching on Zoom than we do on, I'm sorry, we always have more guys watching on YouTube than we do on Zoom. But I just want to let you guys know, I would prefer, this is, you guys are getting some MOA value right now. Uh, I would prefer if you guys talk to me on camera. Also, the other coaches from Men of Action, several of them are on this call. So if you have questions from them, they can answer those questions as well. One more time, guys, normally what I say is unmute yourselves. I can't do that this time. You guys know what? We have trolls that jump on here, so we can't do that. What I need you guys to do, if you're one of the coaches and you have an answer to one of the questions, go ahead and just write your answer in the uh, chat and then I'll bring you up. Okay, cool. Hey, good. Alexander liked the bikini competition too. That's good. I like that. Okay. So we're going to go with Alex Pierre's from Norfolk, Virginia. Alex, what is your question? Hold on a second. Let me make sure. Alex, you are unmuted. Hi, Michael. Uh, yeah, my name's Alex. I'm a good friend of Rithix, actually. He's in a nice. meeting right now. Great buddy of mine went to college together. And one of the- Dude, Rith uh, Rithic's rough, bro. He keeps stealing our girlfriends, bro. He like, we we just turn around and Rith like three or four of our girlfriends are at Rithic's house, bro. One of the- uh, one he's, of the too, he's, too, he's too good with women, bro. He's too good with women. I, we, I Sometimes we, I coach these dudes and they become like monsters. And like Rithic is scary. He's scary. We, uh, we caught him making out with the girl on our front doorstep via the ring camera. Week one of uh, 2020, we just moved into our house. So bro. I can affirm that. Yeah. Yeah. Be um, careful. Be careful. Well, again, one of the problems with MOA guys is that your girlfriend is going to become incredibly attracted to them. So be very careful. Um, yeah. But so uh, I've been, yeah, friends with Rithik for a long time. And one of the things that I will never shut up about is, uh, and something that he actually talked with you about a little while back is the three body problem trilogy. Wow. And, okay. I didn't yeah. expect this. Oh yeah. Um, and so I, I'm a science fiction nerd. And Rithik told me you have a background in astrophysics. I'm a mechanical engineering. Uh, I just okay. Mechanical engineering, modern math. Um, you've but, you've read Hail Mary, Artemis, and The Martian, right? I've seen The Martian, and I've heard of the other two. They're on my active to to read list. Yeah, Hail Mary, Hail Mary's as good as Three Body Problem. Hail Mary's incredible. Really? Wow. Yeah, okay, definitely. Yeah, any anything by anywhere. I yep, he's he's a great great author. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually going to really ask my questions about the societal part of it because just as much as it's an intriguing, gripping sci-fi thrill, the best I've ever seen or read. The society things, I've really started to like see the parallels between what the author portrays in the novels and what we're experiencing now. And so the first question I have for you is, what societal concept or social dynamic from the series would you say is the most prevalent in today's society, i.e. the feminization of men, the complacency in times of peace, the human hubris? What one would you say is the most- Bro, I, I, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. So one of the things that happens for you guys who read The Three-Body Problem is that the, the characters throughout the, 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 uh, the show or th throughout the series, they put themselves in stasis and they wake up and it's like two or three centuries later. And one of the things that happens is that you can't tell the difference between men and women. When they finally get to like three, 400 years in the future, they wake up and they can't, like everyone looks androgynous and men are so incredibly feminine. And I believe, I don't remember if this happened, but like the guys who come out of the, the stasis are like more attractive to the women because they're actually masculine, exactly. but it is, yeah, the feminization, it is, it is one of the characteristics that they talk about on the, uh, in the three body problem. Uh, one of the things that I think is going to happen is the advent of better technology is going to pull us further and further away from the survival scenario, which is going to cause us to have less gratitude and just in general, less survivability, um, fewer survival characteristics, meaning like instead of in the 1850s, you select for a big, a woman would select for a big, strong man that can give her big, strong children that can work on the big, strong farm. Now she's going to pick the, um, She's going to pick the computer programmer. And for those of you guys who are computer programmers, you guys, good for you. You're going to get more pussy. Good job. But the, for the, for, but in general, this, the species is going to get a little smaller and a little weaker. And whereas before, I think the species selected for broader shoulders and higher testosterone, I don't think it does so anymore. When people are like, why are testosterone levels drop, drop from the uh, 1950s? Well, you know, there's a couple of reasons. One of all is like, you know, guys with higher testosterone were having more sex back then. And now- Guys with lower, higher testosterone are in prison. Guys with higher testosterone are unemployed. And now guys with lower testosterone who are computer programmers, they're making more money, but fewer men overall are having sex. And I think that's part of the reason why we're seeing lower testosterone levels. I think that's part of what it is. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff. Like you really have to make huge jumps in the whole interstellar travel stuff. Yeah. Um, um, but I loved it. I, anytime we talk about Game of Thrones or we talk about some zombie thing or we talk about some alien shit, we, the, what, what the, the story really is about is how would humans react to some hu some super crisis like that? And that's why I like game of, like the, the walking dead. It wasn't about the zombies. The walking dead were the humans. 
the, he was actually the humans were the bad guy on that show. It was, it was Negan. It wasn't the actuals. The, the walkers didn't really matter. That wasn't the thing. It wasn't about the, the white walkers in Game of Thrones. You didn't really get to know the white walkers. It was about how did the humans combine their strengths to fight the white walkers. That was what the point was. And right? only after they saw in the Game of Thrones, um, the, the what they call it, the wench or the, uh, they brought it in front of Cersei and all them, only after they saw it they, in their face did they realize, oh shit, we actually need to come together. And even sure. then, right after they defeated the threat, they were right back to getting at each other's throats. Exactly. And the same thing happened. What was the uh, Don't Look Up? Do you remember that Don't Look Up yep. movie? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it was like nobody believed it was a, they thought it was a a, a meteor hoax or whatever, an asteroid hoax. And it turns out yeah. it was real. That was, it was a great, it was a great fucking movie. Right. Yeah. And, and until they saw it, it's like they were all listening to Alex Jones and the conspiracy theories until they saw it. And then they turned on everyone. It's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, the thing is, um, I think, the misinformation campaigns are big. Uh, Short-term thinking versus long-term thinking is an interesting question. And then, you know, the other thing is like the advent of the advances in technology. Again, I when it gets to the point where I can just take a pill and have an incredible body, which we're going to get to that point, why do I ever go to the gym? And the big one is, the big one, Alex, and they didn't talk about this much in the book, but this is the big one I think we'll see in our lifetime, is that there's going to be some, well, it kind of is already with pornography. There's going to be some uh, diversion in a, in in young men's life. And I, I'm just throwing something out there, but it's going to be like a, an almost human feeling Android that looks like a woman. And when a guy gets one of those at 16, he's going to be so used to fucking his Android that he's never going to go back to fucking a woman. And I, that, I think that's going to be the biggest difference right now. We would look at a guy fucking a blow up doll and we'd laugh at his ass. But what if the blow up doll was so realistic and the, the kid got into it so young that he didn't know the difference. I legitimately, throughout my throughout me watching human history, humans always pick the easy way out. They always pick the path of least resistance. That's what they always, they, they always bring a, a fucking, uh, they bring a, a knife to a fist fight and they bring a pistol to a knife fight and they bring a fucking yeah. rocket launcher to a gunfight. That's what humans always do. They always pick the easy way out. So for me, this idea of, well, are they going to get that chip implanted in their head, the neural link? Yes, people are going to get the neural link. If it makes their life easier, I guarantee you they're going to get it. And if people get to the point where men get to the point where they can fuck robots and can't tell the difference between robots and women, they're not going to choose women. I'm sorry. Men are barely able to choose women now. And this is going to be one of these things where it's like, you're going to see Alex like a hundred years from now, my son's going to look like a superstar. My son, my grandson will look like a superstar. Well, he'll be walking around like actually able to talk to women, you know, cause he's going to, he's going to watch MOA a hundred years from now. And then, uh, and then when he does that, um, uh, he does that, he's going to look like a fucking animal compared to all these other ladies who haven't seen a real man in years because they're all, all the dudes are fucking robots. That's what's going to end up happening. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's a very interesting, yeah. The, with the whole, um, if it gets to a point where there isn't some crisis like that to even theoretically, the only way human beings, beings would ever come together would be some sort of crisis. But I don't know if you remember um, right before, and this is kind of leads into my second question, um, the droplet attack when the, the alien probe that was made out of that super, super. Right, so, so but, hold on, I just got to start. Okay. For, first of all, for those of you guys don't know, it's one of the best selling science fiction novels of all time. The Bring author is Chinese. Way. Netflix. Yeah, and Netflix is making a version of this. It's gonna, it'll probably be one of the biggest things on Netflix when it comes out. It's called the three body problem. Uh, the droplet thing, um, Alex, I don't want to go too far into it because yeah, we're gonna yeah. spoil it for everybody. Like everyone, yeah, everyone fair. who's on here is probably gonna end up watching the show. Uh, I don't want to spoil it for everybody, but it is an interesting concept. It's like overwhelming force. I can imagine when the Spaniards first got to the new world. And they went to war with the Native Americans and the Native Americans had never seen firepower before. I don't think that, you know, I, I imagine that was very similar to what it was like for the, those humans uh, encountering the aliens for the first time. My question, yeah, so actually we don't have to spoil it for the, um, the question to still hold, but it kind of goes into the idea of a, being a generalist, being versus a specialist. So with the Trisolarans, the aliens, that's not a, that's not a spoiler. Um, they, have their, a very, they have their super weapon and they thought that it could just, if we concentrate all our resources in getting this thing in the solar system and using it how they do, um, that would be enough to defeat humanity. But then the fourth wall facer, Luo G, who was just thinking the whole time and then pulls out his card, trump card at the end, that was just human ingenuity. So yeah. we kind of looked at all of the other um, people and see what other people had done, the other people who had failed to stop the aliens and said, I'm going to try to put all their plans together 
and he eventually did. So in 2023, definitely not like you have to be one or the other, but what way would you lean in terms of being like a specialist, like the aliens do with their super weapon? Yeah. Or their, or their yeah, this is, this, is, this is a really uh, broad question here. Uh, the answer is, I think right now you're going to have to be a specialist. Got if it. you're a generalist, you have to be elite. A generalist can be good at basketball. So that now you're Michael Jordan. You're like the best ever, right? Mm -hmm. A specialist, however, he's going to be have, he's going to be good at like, I know how to program a sales funnel specifically for dating apps. That guy could make $10 million. Yeah. Right. I know specifically how to, like, I've always said this, somebody needs to do this. All they do is have like a money lending um, program just for women to get breast implants. I'm telling you, somebody's going to come up with this idea. Someone's going to steal this idea from me and they're going to make so much money. Like, I'll, like, like <laughs> no, no money down, no credit necessary. We loan you 5k or 10k for breast implants and we just charge 15% interest. Right. Like, I, I would, somebody needs to do that. Yeah, somebody the, like, needs pay, to make that program. I'm telling you, you interest know rates for like pizza. So app, like yeah, for, for sure, pizza. for so sure. Bro, I just found out. I just found out. I'm paying nine thousand dollars a month in interest for fucking my margin on one of my accounts right now because we had bought we had two to one margin on our stock. It was great. Yeah. But we were making so much money, we didn't care. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, Alex. I mean, that's um, that's a really uh, uh, you know, it's an interesting question. But I don't, I don't know necessarily. The, the, the three body problem is so far out there. I don't know what the allegory, uh, the analogy is today. Uh, yeah, for, that makes sense. for something like that. But um, I do think it it really does pose some very interesting questions uh, for humanity, which is why that, that it was so fantastically popular. And the other yeah. thing is like, you know, we see the Chinese as like this foreign possible enemy of ours, but I love their literature. And that like that, that book series is phenomenal. I really, it's really do. It's way enjoy different it. than Western literature because yeah, yeah, it's, it was yeah. a breath of fresh air for me because Western literature, um, the Chinese is all about the collective as opposed to the mm -hmm. individual. And so it's more of the, the books are focused on ideas and the characters aren't really the stars, but the characters are just vehicles for the ideas to take like and the ideas and the events as opposed to like the events and ideas being like secondary to the character in Western literature there, the ideas and like the the concepts really take center stage it was a very refreshing it was a breath of fresh air i love it i love it okay yeah. awesome That's man any other questions um one last one kind of going back to the whole uh, a quick one about the uh luo g thing pulling out his trump card at the last second um yeah. do you have anything to say about like working i mean obviously work in silence let your uh, success make the noise but um keeping your plan secret or like not really telling people what you're up to until the yeah. moment right yeah yeah. So I think, I think it's, it's both like, right. So for instance, for me, I, I want people to, I want Alex Ramosi to know, I want to do a podcast with him, Yeah. Right. I don't have it planned, but I would like people to know that. So I, that's something I would say ahead of time. Um, the other thing is like putting something in place. Like we, uh, we had a record. This is the most money we, this most revenue we've ever generated in one week of MOA was this week. Wow. Um, Congrats. And, and a lot of the reason why we went over the top was because of affiliates. And I've talked to you guys about affiliates. You guys know, right in the chat, where did I, my affiliate program, who did I steal my affiliate program from? Put it in the chat. If you guys remember anybody, see if you guys can remember those of you, there we go. You, you wrote it. There we go. That's ex exactly right. I stole, I stole, I stole my affiliate program from Andrew Tate. Um, and so, and it's, it's paid off dividends. And what I would like ideally is to have um, organic paid and affiliates be a third, a third, a third, as far as our, our revenue is concerned. That way, if we lose one, we have two other to fall back on. I want multiple streams of revenue. So in that case, I don't think it's a problem to talk about it yeah. where you can't, where I have an issue is a guy who hasn't started a business. Who's in guaranteeing me, he's going to be a multimillionaire in two years. That is to me, that's like the secret. You're just saying shit. And so I don't say, I, you don't hear me say, I'm going to be a multimillionaire in two years. You don't hear me say any of that shit. What you'll hear me say is we've got ideas for new businesses and here's how we're going to execute them. Right. Yeah. And I've told you guys before, like, what are my plans to get guys on my show? Like, I'll tell you guys right now, you know, you know if he sees this, I hope he does. Cause I have a ton of respect for the guy. I want Alex Ramosi to come on my podcast. So what's the plan to get him to come on my podcast? Number one, his new book's coming out. I think it's a hundred million dollar leads. I think that's what's called. And then, so I'm going to be like, I'm going to write, I have Alex's number. I'm going to write him a, a message and I'm going to say, Hey, Alex, I'd like to help you promote uh, your book, hundred million dollar leads. And then I'm going to, and then underneath it is going to be my interview with Brad Lee, my interview with Neil Patel, my interview with, uh, uh, with, um, uh, Dan Fleischman and, uh, hardcore closer, my interview with Wes Watson, my interview with Jay Cutler. I'm going to put all those down there. So, and then my interview with Ty Lopez so that he's like, wait a second, 
these other marketers and coaches thought highly enough about Michael Sartain to do an interview with him. Yeah. And he's helping me promote my book. I'm a nobody to Alex Hermosi. But what I've done is I've surrounded him. So now do you see how I'm talking to you guys about a thing? Now, I'm not guaranteeing I'm going to get an interview with yeah. Alex Hermosi. But my mm -hmm. point is, this is my strategy. When it If it comes to fruition, how incredible is this video going to look yeah. if it comes to fruition? And if it doesn't come to fruition, and instead I end up with Ed Milet or Grant Cardone, Still how incredible is this video going to look, yeah. right? So, but it's a, it's a similar strategy. And so one of the things is, I don't know how much access you guys individually would get to Grant Cardone if you took his course or get to Wes Watson or get to any of those other guys, but you're going to get a ton of access with me. And so well, the, one of the things is if you guys ever go to a nightclub and you know the owner, sometimes it's not good to know the owner. It's good to know the door guy. The door guy can get you in. The owner, he doesn't have time to come get you in. A lot of times with me, I'm not as big as Alex Hermosi. And so because of that, you guys are going to get a lot more of me than you might get of him. I'm going to do nine hours a week. Whereas Alex, I don't know how much he does with his clients, but I'm going to do nine hours every week with you guys and do, and do Q and A's as far as long as I can until I answer everybody's question. Make sense? Yeah. I'm a little bit more of the little guy. Yeah. I mean, awesome. no, great answer. Thank you very much for your time. Awesome, man. Let's, uh, let's go to the next one. Let's go to uh, Arcel. Arcel, what's your question? And hold on, ask to unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Sure can. What's the question, man? Hey, Michael, I just want to say thank, thank you for taking your time and um, having this live chat. Um, one of my questions would be, uh, just to make it cut and short, would be like, how do you go about being out in the nighttime in the nightclub situation where you may not have a lot of girls when you um, going out to certain places, but how do you go out alone? Uh, what, what's the best recommendation of what clubs to go to if you're by yourself? What city are you in? New York. First I would take thing I would tell you is um, you uh, I, I would recommend you uh, getting in touch with the other MOA guys in New York. That would be the first thing I would tell you. Hold on a second, man. I need you to mute yourself. Can you mute yourself real quick? Yes, sir. Um, um, so, so one of the things I want I want you to understand is um, I would get with the guys in New York and kind of understand what their strategies are. That's the first thing. Number two is, I know this is going to sound weird, I time my caffeine. So like right now, I haven't had any caffeine today until right now, until I got on this call. I, I limit my caffeine intake drastically and i time it it's kind of a weird idea but like actually going to the club i've done this on an empty stomach with taking a little bit of caffeine i get a little bit of a boost and then i'm very happy to go out and i know what i'm working on oh this is another thing i want to this this will help you guys a lot of you guys at the club okay when i go to the club i'm there to create content i'm not there to do cocaine i'm not there to drink vodka I'm not there to sit there and like talk for hours. I don't do the 1030 comps that end at 2 a.m. I don't spend three and a half hours at the club. I go to the club for at most an hour and 45 minutes, usually around 45 minutes I'm at the club. When I'm there, I'm there to create content. I have a mission. I have a purpose. People who don't have a purpose, they get super drunk or they sit in the fucking bathroom stall snorting cocaine. No, I have a purpose when I go to a club. You guys need to have a purpose. When you do, you're not gonna have a problem when you have a purpose, you're not going to have a problem um, going by yourself, and you're not going to have a problem going without drinking. That would be the best advice I could give you. Nolan said, Arcel, let me sit. Let me let you um, go ahead. You can un unmute yourself again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's actually pretty good advice. It's just that um, between you and with what you already do and actually you know since i'm in new york city i'm closest to like most of the clubs in new york city especially in meatpacking if you're familiar with meatpacking uh it's a district in new york city that's uh where there's a host a bunch of clubs like you got child group you got he's the dream uh catch uh Lobane. um the only issue is like um i kind of know a few promoters in new york city but um for me, it's always been kind of challenging just to find girls. And of course, like, I have a nice friends of girls, but uh, it's tricky to get them to come out. And okay. Arcel, so here's, a, here's, a, here's what we're going to do, right? The, the problem that you're having, this is a really, uh, this is a really cool way to, to put it, right? So the book by Alex Hermosi is the $100 million offer. And it's really funny because my program has so much to do with that concept. So first thing I'm going to tell you is I need you to go to the free MOA school server 
and I need you, if Eric, Eric Sandoval, if you could put that back in the uh, chat, if, if you, I need you to go to the free MOA school server. I need you to take the first four steps of MOA. It's a course. It's a free course that's in there. Okay. When you go through that, um, through that course, it's going to go over these steps. And one of the things that you're doing that's, that if you have trouble getting girls to come out with you, it's because your offer isn't good enough. One of the, the reasons why I'm able to teach this networking strategy that I do without using any money is because for men, I become valuable. And for women, I have a better offer. So for men, the reason why guys always ask me, you know, invite me out is because I'm valuable. Why am I valuable? I'm valuable because, because of my podcast, valuable because of my connections. I'm valuable because I can help you make money. I'm valuable because I can take your affiliate code and help you make money. And I'm valuable because I can bring 70 girls to your event. That's why I'm valuable. I'm going to Slam Ball. Uh, Slam Ball's uh, grand opening is on the 21st, and I'm taking a bunch of girls to Slam Ball. I'm a huge fan of Slam Ball. Uh, and then Ty Lopez is having me speak at his event on the 22nd or 23rd. Um, so I'm, I'm talking to Itzel, uh, his manager, one of his people uh, right now about doing the Ty Lopez thing this weekend. So why is it why is it that they want me around? Because I'm useful. Why is that women want you around? Or why does women come to your thing? Because it's a better offer. So my offer last night when we went out was, hey, guys, do you want to go on stage to see uh, Tyga? So I went to Tyga, went up to the stage, and got up on stage, brought all the girls up on stage with me. So that was the, the offer was, hey, do you want to go on stage to see Tyga? For me, the offer, the positive offers are Maxim Cart Party, Babes in Toyland, $60,000 bikini competition, uh, uh, Paradise Challenge, uh, Swimsuit USA World's Championship, Teatro Party, um, Golden Soiree, Espy's Party, um, Playboy Mansion Party. Those are the, the positive offers. When the offer is better, we did a Midsummer Night's Dream Party one time at, at Marquee, and I invited all the girls, and they all wore like lingerie or whatever for that. When you do those type of parties, your offer is better. And then when you when you put out your offer, we also have uh, advice on invites. The invites are always more uh, more evidence, fewer words. More evidence, fewer words. So what is the evidence we show? That's where we get into irrefutable visual evidence. We always want to show pictures of people at our events having fun. And we send those pictures to the next round of people that we want to come to our events. And we use as few words as possible in our invite. That's what we do for our offer that makes it go very well. And then lastly, this is step number two in Men of Action, is that your list needs to be, especially for a place like New York, if you don't have 4,000 girls on your list, you're not doing it right. You haven't even... Uh, Bro, uh, Arcel, you aren't even close, like at minimum 4,000, minimum. And if you need help with that, uh, there's a bunch of guys in MOA up in the Northeast that have their own lists. We, in MOA, we don't mind giving our lists out. The reason why is because if your Instagram isn't perfect, you can message. I will give any of you guys right now my entire list. It won't make any difference because your Instagrams are shit. So you're going to message these girls and you're going to go in the request folder and they're never going to respond to you. If you don't do step number one, which is fix your Instagram, you can message all of them and it doesn't work. Step number two is have the big list. And step number three is find the events to send people to. That's the offer. If your offer isn't good, then no one's going to care. And then step number four is bring six girls to those events. And then all the steps in between, like how to do the invites and all that kind of stuff, that's actually in the MOA program. Does that make sense? Uh, or so, uh, unmute yourself. Oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And, you know, honestly, I appreciate uh, all the value that you give out, honestly, because I recently was reading a book, uh, not to go off topic, but uh, I've been reading this book. Well, it's on Audible. Uh, it's called The Power of One More by Ed Milet. And I don't okay. know if anyone having a chance to listen to it, but it's always talking about, you know, finding mentors, finding coaches, and so someone such as yourself actually is someone like uh, we're listening to it and, and you know the value that you offer and like what you're saying uh, makes total sense because like you know it's basically you know the value you bring is also like what am I bringing also so it makes total sense and yeah you know, I'll definitely like take a, take a look uh, but uh, one final question um, just to you know not to go off topic but any chance like you plan on interviewing Neil Strauss uh, out there in the game um, there's a possibility. Um, I'm not sure right now, right now. I don't, I haven't talked to Neil in, um, in, in years, but uh, maybe there's a possibility I can reach out to him. Okay. Sounds Appreciate good. Appreciate it, man. All right, man. Talk to you soon. All right, let's get to the next question. Give me one second.
let's go to George. George, what's your question? Can you unmute yourself, George? Uh, one more time, George. I ask you to unmute yourself. All right, we got, we got it. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah, what's up, Michael? What's up? Yo, I got to say first, that debate between you and Zerka, man, like, hilarious, man. Yeah? Yeah, the funny is, Zerka, nobody's, he knew he was going to lose, and he's just, like, just going at it. That was the funniest shit ever. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, it was pretty fun. All right, I'm going to go to my first question. Um, okay, so I want to do – I want to attend the the Miss USA and the Babes in Toyland, the one that's coming up. I want to know what is the difference, like, between the two? Because I got to make that drive out, and I want to I want to see which event, like, I'll take um, – I want to take a couple girls that I've met here out in Temecula. So, you know, I want to know which which one is better to to do that. Uh, which – the Temecula one or the one that's in Los Angeles? No, so I'm in Temecula and I got to make the drive out, right? So what I want to do is I want to bring four girls fit in my car right now. So I want to I want to ask you like which one uh, would be better, right? I'll probably attend both of them, but I, I only know about the prelim in LA. What are you? Which one are you asking about? The one, uh, the event on the 26th and the 27th that are both in LA. Oh, uh, if you're bringing yeah. uh, the girls competing? No, it's just it's just hot girls that I've met that. They do then the 27th. No, you're not taking them to the 26th. If they're not competing, why would they come to the bikini competition? Just so I can bring girls. <laughs> I mean, that's cool. But yeah, no, if you have to make yeah. the drive, no, definitely the 27th. It's not even close. Yeah. If you're even if they're hot, they can just walk the stage. They can walk the red carpet. Okay, cool. And I also want to do photo and video. I messaged the, the page and Steven. Either way, like I'll show up with the camera. But is there, what, what do you think about that? Like, is there a way that I can... Send them another message or or just show up with the camera? No, you can't show up with the camera. You have to send them a message. Okay. If they, don't, if they don't write you back, then there's too many people. We can't have everybody. Like if we if we allowed everyone with a camera and MO into uh, Babes and Toilet, there'd be 500 cameras in there. <laughs> true, true. All right, man. Um, let me ask the next question because I wrote the shit down. All right. So, yeah, I, I did take your advice because um, when you had that podcast with Pearl, you like you you told her oh that that Rolo was mad at her because she didn't she didn't read, uh you know she didn't do like the work basically right so yeah. I pretty much made sure that I read all the books you know on evolution psychology, and you know I'm I'm just I just said fuck it right I just made a bunch of videos so I'm already ready to upload that so I just keep uploading them like once or twice a day, just till like yes definitely definitely do that but make sure you read those books. Yeah, I, I read them. I read all of them, and I have like the social proof to. Of course, if I'm like, oh, talking about social proof, I can just put it in there, right? I don't understand what your question is. What kind of vid, like, what are you asking? You want to post videos? What? Yeah, like grow, grow the brand. Like, do you have any advice for that? Or just just take a bunch of videos. And my advice to like, grow the brand, my advice to grow the brand is for you to post as many times as you can, like three times a day, like reels. That would be the best way to grow the brand. Okay. Also, then, where, where, where's your content? Are you doing like five hour videos? Like, where's the content coming from for the reels? That's what I'm asking. No, it's just me recording here in the room. Like, okay, that's fine. That'll do it. But you're going to have to do a lot. You're, okay. But it, the thing is to grow the brand, like what are you growing the brand for? Is the brand you talking about nothing? What are you talking about? Are you talking about something that's popular? If you're going to talk about testosterone and steroids, you go popular pretty quick. If you're talking about, <laughs> hey, I'm George Jara, and this is what my views are on like relaxation and like spirituality, you're not going to grow very fast. Okay. No, mo most of my videos would be like touching just small topics like like evolution psychology, like social proof or like, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Levels that's and shit fine. like that. Yeah you, can, yeah, you can do that. Sure. Yeah, and then it's going to take you, it's going to take you a while. The thing that'll help you grow the fastest is collaborations with other people. Okay. Collaborations. Okay. And then, um, yeah. I asked the question in the group a, a couple of weeks ago, and I also wanted to edit like videos from, you know, Axis Vegas and your podcast and Rolo's like also. Yeah. Cool. Then get, so? get an affiliate, get an affiliate code from us and just edit them. Okay, uh, who do I message? Because I already posted. You don't have to. You don't have to message anyone. You just get an affiliate code. Okay. How do so I MOA, yeah, moa.com forward slash affiliates. If you do that, then you get an affiliate code, and then you could just they, you get access to a Dropbox, and it's got all of our footage, and you can just make videos, and then you put your affiliate code, and if you sell a course, then you get paid for it. All right. Cool. 
Yeah, that was, that was my question then. Yeah, yeah. Also, go on the free school server. There's literally a part that says affiliates. It's got all the instruction to be affiliates. And there's 10 affiliate accounts in there that you can copy. All right. All right. Sound good, man. Love it. Love Thank it. You. Yeah, for those, yeah, the affiliate thing's a big thing if you guys want to do it. Like I said, we made our most of our money this week from affiliates. Uh, Dimitar, what's your question? Hold on a second. Uh, go ahead and Dimitar, unmute yourself. Can you hear me, Mike? I sure can. Okay, cool. <clears throat> uh, so my question is um, about fixing the Instagram. Uh, I was wondering uh, if you, uh, if you, Try to uh, to start a new account, get it uh, off the ground. Uh, how do you approach the followers? This is kind of what I missed in the uh, in the free course. Uh, do you? What would you do to get it from zero to to some number that doesn't look too weird? Are you? Showing it to your friends or wait one more time. Can you? Yeah, I lost you for like the last ten seconds. Can you say that again? Okay. Uh, my question is, how do you get your Instagram off the ground from like zero? Do you show it to your friends in order to just get uh, a bunch of followers in order for you? Yeah, so, so don't weird? don't worry about getting a bunch of followers. Worry about get having great content and then start promoting the brand. Having your friends like help you promote the brand is something that you can do. Um, the other thing is like when you tag, so let's say you post something cool and you tag a big account and that big account reposts you, that's a great way to grow your account really well. So that's something I've done before. I'll post a quote of somebody and they'll repost the quote and I'll get a bunch of people. So one time I posted this video of a Bulzarian where I was like, man, this guy's never turned down a photograph I've ever seen. I posted on his birthday. He reposted the video and I got like 5,000 new followers on uh, Instagram because of it. Make sense? Uh, yeah, but uh, but my question is um, a new account, basically brand new, zero followers, stuff like that. How do yeah. you get it from zero to something that's, that that does make sense to do all the? Yeah, rest no, 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 nobody. It doesn't matter. Again, uh, Dimitar, there's only so many women you can date, and how many so many clients that you can have, and it's fewer than ten thousand. So getting ten thousand followers means nothing, or even a like seventeen hundred followers is fine in the beginning. Don't worry about that. What I'm telling you is it, it, Instagram will, you know what? I'll just show you guys. You know what? Let me just, just do this right now. Cause I, I, I go over this every time we do this and I don't know if you guys understand. So I'm just going to show you real quick. We're going to do this files. No basic. We're going to go iPod. There we go. Download. Give me one second. Got to download the plugin. Uh, in mono. There and. You guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. Do you see where it says 975,000 accounts reached in the last 30 days? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Let's go down here real quick. Accounts reached. All right, cool. Of the accounts that were reached, how many were from followers and how many were from non-followers? Mostly from non-followers. Okay, so that means that Instagram get exposed my account to 936,000 people. Do you think they did that because I posted a little or because I posted a lot? Posted a lot. Okay. So when I post a lot, does it matter that I have few followers or is Instagram going to show my account, show my stuff to other accounts because I post a lot? Uh, are, are, are you are you following me? If, if not, if not, it's like we're like ninety one percent of my engagement comes from accounts that don't follow me, and I post more. That's how I grow my account. Does that make sense? Yeah. And let's look at look at the different places. Which one of these three things, reels, posts, and stories, is the best place for me to gain new followers? The reels, like by a little bit or by a lot, by quite a bit. You guys see this? Is everybody seeing this? When I say post more on reels, I'm not kidding. This is how you grow your accounts. Got it? Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Okay. So that's the answer. You have to post a lot and you're going to want other people to repost your stories and your reels. Got it? This is yeah. the biggest number for me, by the way, of all the numbers. This is the biggest one. It's a uh, whole accounts engaged. Uh, let's go here. Uh, it should be top content. No, hold on. Reels. Do you see the shares? 31,000 shares. Mm -hmm. That is more important than anything. If you want to know the number one number that equates to business, it's the shares number. 
31,000 shares and I'm nobody guys. I don't have fake tits. I didn't even have a blue check mark before they started, pa uh, you know, passing them around or whatever. And like, for those of you who are like, no, he paid for this 1.1% from ads. We do run ads on, on Instagram. 1.1% from ads. If you guys don't understand, this is why I post so much. This is why I post so much. But one more time, let's look at that. 31,000 shares. For any of you guys who think I, I bought my following or I fake this shit, that's 31,000 shares. Okay. Got it? We got it. Makes sense. So post more and you want people, you want people to share your engage your stuff and you want to share, you want, if other people, you, you post something and tag someone else in it. And then, then when they reshare it, like, again, I got 5,000 new subs one time because Andrew Tate reposted something that I posted before he lost his, his uh, Instagram. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Hey, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for uh, for joining us. All right, let's keep going. Let's go to Mark. Mark, what's your question? And unmute yourself, Mark. All right, my question is like I've been realizing like I'm alone partially because I overqualify everyone. For example, if somebody has like smokes weed sometimes on Hinge, that's a hard no for me. Like a more detailed example is like. Last week, I was talking to a 23-year-old on a video call on some app, and they were interested in blah, sexual thing. And I told them I had no experience with that, was fully vanilla. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, are you sure up. are are you sure you want to talk about this on camera, Mark? Wait, what? Hold on. <laughs> put, hey guys, put a one in the chat if you want Mark to explain more about what he's talking about. Put a one in the chat. Wait a second. Put a one, put a one. Mark, what in the blue fuck are you talking about, bro? You're okay. Let's start over. You're talking to a 23 year old that is talking to you about sexual shit. What is the 23 year old, a woman or a man? A woman, obviously a woman. And you're talking, okay, obviously nothing, bro. I don't understand why 23 year old women are talking to you about sexual shit. What, what am I missing here? What app are we it's talking a, about? Uh, it's this app called pure. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what, what is, what is the point of the app? How, how is the app described? Specifically Mark? for hookups and things like that, even more than Tinder was. Oh, say, so it's, it's it, okay. So it's just a, hold on. Am I on the wrong app? Sounds like it. That's the FBI. Isn't that purity <laughs> until marriage? Look at these comments. Hilarious, bro. Hello. He's shooting. <laughs> Hell no, bro. This is incredible. Yo, 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 this is amazing. All right, let's keep going. Hold on. Did some, oh, 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 time out, guys. I got two super chats. Jesus Christ, I didn't even see this. Hey, man, shout out to you guys for the super chats. Give me one second. I'm going to read the super chats. Um, uh, so, so going back to what you're saying. So you're talking to a 20-year-old, 23-year-old girl, and you don't think she's a hooker? I'm confused. No. I'm just skipping to the end just because I don't I have all day. That? But I, I, because 20, because on dating apps, is she, is she really attractive? Somewhat. Okay, Mark, so really attractive women. On, so do you understand women don't need dating apps to meet guys? They can just go out. They don't really need, dating apps are kind of only for men. So really attractive women on dating apps, they're trying to get you to subscribe to their OnlyFans or pay them for sex. I'm sorry, I mean, maybe you didn't know that, but that's what's going on here. Sometimes and sometimes not. Okay, so can you give me an example? Like, what do you think is going on here? What is what's so confusing about to this? I don't know. I just hadn't thought of that before because I only I only get that impression if somebody sends me a message. Like, I'm super literal about everything. I, I have a feeling you are very literal, uh, Mark. One, one more time, what is she saying to you? This, I'm I'm sorry, I don't even. I just got to know, what is she saying? The 23-year-old woman on Pure, what is she saying to you? What does she want? Is she, she wanted sending you news? somebody to get into BDSM with them. Okay. She's, she, she's looking for BDSM, so she wants you to be a bottom. Mm, I'm not sure. They didn't get that far into it. Yeah, but that's the thing. That's what happens in BDSM. You get really far into it. Get it? <laughs> you, get, you get really that's far into I it. That's why I stay away it? from that. Get it? Um, hold on. Uh, can, um, uh, 
I want to you if somebody has a question for um if somebody has a question for uh for Mark, can you guys uh type Mark in the chat and I'll unmute you. I'll unmute you. Oh my god. Kylie, what's going on? Yeah. Kylie, is that my food? Yeah. Okay, thank God. Um so uh does this anybody is have getting too out of hand. I should probably shut up now. Yeah, I'm thinking, Mark. I, I'm thinking, Mark. It's kind of obvious to me what's going on. Huh? Yeah, I know. Um. Yeah, Mark. Uh, so I, I'm going to just tell you right now. I can't really help you. I, I'm going to say it's a 99.9999999% chance it's a prostitute. They're going to ask you to do something kind of crazy, or it's uh they're trying to get you on OnlyFans. Okay. So that's Thanks. what my my advice to you would be to kind of like. That's not what I, I would not use pure for that. Yeah. That makes sense. What you want to use, what, what I would use one of these dating apps for is you see a good hot girl, bring her onto your IG and then see if she still wants to communicate or just try to move it over to like meeting in person. But the thing is, Mark, like, like I said before, 83% of like 20, the top 20% of men are getting 83% of the right swipes, which means the bottom 80% of men are getting 17% of the right swipes. But a lot of those right swipes, that number is even more skewed because a lot of those right swipes are coming from girls that are prostitutes or girls that are trying to get guys on their OnlyFans. So it's probably more like 10% of women of that 80% of guys are, are competing for. Sound good? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Beautiful. Eric Tang, what's your question, Eric? Oh, stand by. Eric, go ahead. Hey, Michael. So I've been looking to kind of expand into the nightlife scene uh, consistently here in New York City. Um, so I know you're a former like business partner from... Uh, MOA, uh, the guy who shall not be named. Yep. Uh, his advice was basically to uh, befriend like the promoter, the bartender, and the manager. Um, I know the promoter. Um, that seems pretty obvious. Uh, the bartender uh, part seems pretty obvious. It would just be like talking to him over time. Um, how would you kind of get in touch with uh, the manager at some of these the like, high easy. nightclubs? You would just ask for him. So the thing, the thing about the whole manager thing is like, imagine if you owned a nightclub or a restaurant and somebody had something nice to say about your restaurant, you would be super, 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 you would notice what he's saying. Like if you just make friends with the GM over at Excess, you never have to worry about getting in. It's you get in free anytime you want. It's super easy. If you know the GM over at Excess or the GM over at, um, the GM over at um, Zook, it's it's super easy. So getting to know them is super important. And I would just ask. I would be like, hey, who's the GM? Remember, this is not you trying to approach an attractive woman. You talking to the GM is different. It's like there, it's it's a man talking to a man generally, unless the GM's female. But like often when you, it, it, if you guys have ever tried to get a really a, attractive female influencers to come to a party, it's like pulling teeth. A lot of them are late. It's not super easy. But if you try to get really attractive, um, no, really attractive. If you try to go get what do they call real estate agents or whatever to come to your, if if you try to get real estate agents or whatever to come, real estate agents, their job is to network with people. So just imagine me trying to get one hundred real estate agents to come to an event versus me trying to get one hundred girls with a million Instagram followers. The reason why in MOA we start with the influencer parties is, oh my god, babe, just can you just leave that here? I'll just eat the whole thing. Oh my God, baby. Dude, the crumble, the cookies from crumble. Yes, of course I want one. Dude, I don't know what, like if anybody who works at crumble, my, boy, I would eat this shit off a pig's ass. It's so good. Um, you want to just feed them to me, babe? Yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, go back to what I was saying before. The reason why we start with the influencer parties is because they're harder. God damn, bro. Oh my God. Which one? I mean, I like that chocolate chip, but probably yeah, one of these two. So he yes. probably likes this. I don't want to take the one he wants. This is cookie dough. Guys, look at this. This is incredible. <laughs> Bro, can you guys see the di can you guys see the diabetes in my neck? Can you guys see the diabetes? Guys, look up crumble. The cookies are like, just imagine if like Krispy Kreme donuts were cookies. It's so diabetes. I got the diabetes. Um. Anyway, does that Eric? Does, do you understand what I'm saying? So the situation yeah, with this yeah. is, um, go ahead. Yeah, I was uh, saying in respect to the the manager. Obviously, you're saying um, it's a different conversation, obviously, than I would have to a really attractive woman. Um, bro, this is just straight butter. Is, it's just butter. It's just butter. There's nothing, bro. I'm just I'm, I'm trying to see like what is it? What's what's his flavor? 
The flavor is fucking butter. It's just, oh my God. It's so good. Well, how- yeah, so your approach is kind of, uh, what, what are you kind of saying to the manager? Uh, well, man to man. I'm about, I'm about to have sex with this cookie. I'm about to have sex with this cookie so goddamn good. They're so good. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm oh, my bad. All right, keep talking. Yeah, that was basically it. Like, what are you, what are you kind of like saying to the manager? Um, uh, hey man, like, I, I, I love, I love, clubs. I love this place. This place is incredible. I just want to let you know, man. I tell my friends all the time. Here's another thing: when you get the manager's IG, you tag him in a clip, and the clip says, "Best club in Vegas, best restaurant in Vegas." But you tag the guy, kind of like a shadow tag. He reposts it. You will never have to pay to get in that bitch ever again. Okay. Yeah. And the bartender part, it seems pretty straightforward. It would just be a function of uh, mere, uh, mere exposure, um, just over numerous occasions. Uh, correct? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Okay. Got it. Um, and then the other part uh, of kind of getting into nightlife was um, beyond before all that was just the price entry. It just seems <clears throat> everything is just like super expensive here. Um, the venues, uh, eating out, just everything. Um like getting into the clubs, general admission, all this uh, nonsense. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's like the same over in New York City as it is in Vegas. Like the way they handle things, like comps, stuff like that. But uh, what do you kind of know? Dude, about in that? Vegas on a Sunday night, you can have five dudes and get a comp. Yeah, yeah, that's why I figured. Like. I don't know if that's really possible. Over you, go to, you go to SDK on a Monday and it's a $3,000 dinner and they comp the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. We're five dudes. Well, not, no, no, you have to have like 10 girls with you. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Like 10 and five. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> There's no food comps for dudes, but you can get a table comp. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I like... Yeah, when, to, to answer your question, there's nothing I can do to fix New York. Leave. I would leave. Unless there's a yeah, reason you have yeah. to be in New York, I would leave. Yeah, yeah the women are definitely uh, a little bit like less attractive there, too. Um, I mean, I just like don't see any of like, the Vegas types uh, over here as well. It's super rare, man. I keep saying that to you guys. Like, Yeah, man. <laughs> you, you need to, if you're in a sunny city, girls wear bikinis. Girls wear bikinis, they <laughs> want to be in shape. Mm-hmm. Also, girls that are in shape work at strip clubs. So the 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 fucking the gyms are filled with girls who are wear bikinis and girls that work at strip clubs and girls that work in bottle service. So when girls go to the gym here, they look around and they see all these skinny girls with six pack abs and big fake tits. And you know what they're like? They're like, shit, I gotta get on fucking clembuterol and some you know, some glutide. I gotta go Dr. Smith. Dr. Revis or Dr. fucking Corsandi and get some big old fake titties. That's what happens. And then the whole city looks like that. You ended up in a city where all the girls look like that. Welcome to Las Vegas. If you didn't understand, like, that's why I live here. Mm-hmm. All right. Awesome. Uh, thanks, man. Of course. Um, get anybody else with any questions, please raise your hand. I'm going to read the super chats. Um, shout out to uh, Fahim Jackson with a $20 super chat. I'm a fashion portrait photographer. How do I advise my work? Do I use... Uh, do I use Boost advertising for my Instagram? What's another way to pay for advertising? Uh, Fahim, I would recommend for you, number one, um, I would um, get a Facebook ad manager account and then start running different kind of ads. Um, and then also the Boost could work. I found that Facebook ad manager works better. I've had more luck with that. I don't think YouTube is going to work for what you do. And unless you make some kind of TikToks with your photography, I don't know how TikTok's going to work, but it could work. Um, Fahim, also, you're welcome to join us on. Uh, Zoom, if you want to ask any more questions. Uh, Happy, uh, he has a super chat. I don't really need any coaching, but just to drop by to say hi. I enjoy the podcast. Keep up the hard work. People notice, God notices. Okay, thank you, man. I appreciate that, guys. You guys are awesome. Cool. Uh, anybody else with any, any questions, uh, please raise your hand. So here's, here's what we're going to do. Oh, one more time, for those of you who are new, just look down at the bottom where it says reaction. Click reaction and then say raise hand. A uh, few things I want to go over. Uh, I'm going to do... Uh, Ty Lopez has a program, a new program where it's like, like, like wealthy, really successful guys looking for like that, that special soul, someone it's a dating course. Um, and the upsell for his dating course is going to be MOA. I believe that's what the plan is. We're not positive that that's what we're going to do, but that's what the initial plan is. We're going to handle his upsells. Uh, I'm going to do something. I think it's Casanova method. I forgot what it's called, but we're going to go, I'm going to go to 
hang out with Ty this weekend and we're going to make some content together. Um, like I said, on the 17th, we have my man, uh, Justin Ross Lee coming on. I also, the, for those of you who ever watched slam ball, like 20 years ago on ESPN, I'm going to the slam ball again. I just reached out to slam ball. I was like, Hey man, I, can I bring like seven, eight girls to your event? And they were like, hell yes. And they gave me all, they, they have like a hundred tickets. It was pretty fucking awesome. So I'm going to the grand opening of slam ball on Friday. Um, and then also the other thing is I am going to be doing a debate with Nick Fuentes, a debate. I'm not really sure what, what's going to happen. It's going to be me and sneak or me and destiny on one side. And I don't know who's going to be on the other side. We're going to do it on value tainment and we might be doing it somewhere else also on another, another show. So I'm going to be doing a few shows in Florida when I go there on August 2nd, that is the plan so far from uh, Sean. Yeah, it's a good, good point there. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Here we go. It's George Jara. Uh, George, what's your question? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Sorry, man. I'm buzzing from all, right, all the right. sugar. I just can just sugar and butter. I just consumed. No, nah, man, that, the, those cookies are amazing. Yeah. Uh, this, this has probably been asked before, but is there a difference between posting like the reels on your main page or what to just keep them on the real, real grid? Yeah. So this is an interesting one. Um, I would look that up. I think that's changed over time. Uh, mm -hmm. We used to initially, I would post reels and then I would hide them from my main page and just keep them under my reels tab. Shar, who's currently my social media manager, she recommends against that. So we have not been doing that. Okay. And then one more question about uh, the event that's coming up. Okay. So I want to attend both events. So is, should I get the VIP for the, the swimsuit USA and then, or just get like the normal tickets for both events? Um, I don't know uh, because I'm hosting them and I don't sell tickets. My, my guess would be you probably have a good time with VIP with both events. If it's not that big of a difference, then I would probably do that. But I mean, it's just, it's a great place to get content and you're going to network with, you know, probably 300 girls. Yeah, because the VIP is uh, reserved seating and all that, you know. George, here's the thing I'm going to tell you. Your, okay. your, uh, your, your goal when you get there is to make content. Content, yes. That's I bought a goal. light and I got a little light, so. Okay, that's your first goal. Your second goal while you're there is to invite people to the next event the next event the next event so every girl at the bikini competition will be like you're coming to yeah, base just, right? just stack the future i mean that, that is part of future rejection but that also future, creates future a close that causes yeah it causes a close where you can get them on ig because you want to exchange ig and you want them to you want to have content with them and you want to have open threads yeah that, that's what i did at the last event that i attended uh at a newport beach i was just the girls that i met i was like i met this girl that does like um what is it called vaulting or whatever mm -hmm. and that's what i told her i was like yo just come to this uh charity event and it's gonna be a good time yo Spiritual. like i can feel my pulse in my neck from that cookie there was so much okay. butter in that cookie. that cookie was just nothing but butter bro like that was crazy like look up guys look up crumble cookies they're just made out of fucking like butter and unicorn poop they're so good i should yeah, try so the good. red velvet that's that's the best red one. velvet yeah yeah, it's called <laughs> red, red velvet breakup sex. That's what it's called. It's so fucking good. Uh, Here we go, guys. Uh, Arcel, what's your uh, what's your question? What? Oh, one. Uh, guys, come on, no, come around this way, so you can you can feed me. Arcel, go ahead and unmute yourself. Give me one second. All right, guys, hold on. I want before I die. I want you guys. I want you to see this right before I die. Ready? Here we go. Mm. Sorry, guys. She, she's naked, so she can't come on camera. Do naked so you can't come on camera. Go ahead. What's your question? Hey, Michael. So, um, was going back to what uh, Sarah Jen asked you about getting uh, meeting people and getting contacts. What you just said was like, is it better? To, so, is it better to get someone's social media instead of the the actual cell number? Arcel, yes, it is. Arcel, could you do me a favor? Can you can you make sure you you do that those that that free course because it's going to answer all these questions. Absolutely. Like I, I like I love these questions. If you're in MOA, they already all know the answers to this. But like I, that's where I would look. The answer is yes. So your your IG. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Guys, I want to take this cookie behind the junior high and get it pregnant. God damn, bro. Mm. No, hold on. Baby, it's all right. I know you're naked. It doesn't violate terms of service. 
We put a shirt on. I hope eating sex does not like get me violated on YouTube. Uh. All right, awesome. Um, the Nick Puentes stuff. It's really. If you guys want to raise your hand and, and give me your opinions on this, uh, I, I'm sure he won't watch this. But um, what do you guys think? It's very insidious. For those of you who don't know who Nick Fuentes is, it's fine. Um, it's uh, Arcel, like whatever daytime strip club you're at, the music's really loud, so it's kind of hard for us to, to hear you. The um, the um, I'm fucking with you, dude. The uh, the the thing is, uh, with the Nick Fuentes thing. For those of you who don't know, Nick Fuentes is what's called a race realist. And he believes that the races should separate very much like a, a separatist. Uh, but he he sits there and he, he talks about this with black people. He screams out the N-word in front of black people and they all laugh. It's very, very odd to watch. Uh, he's he's a bit of an apologist for, for Adolf Hitler. It's a very, very crazy thing. So I'm going to be debating him on August 3rd. Um, and it's extremely like the stuff he talks about is, I mean, it's admittedly anti-Semitic. So it's going to be an interesting uh, conversation. Uh, it's one that I personally find kind of offensive, even though I'm not Jewish. The other one is um, the thing with Zerko with the flat earth. I know for a lot of you guys watched it, it was like, you know, really entertaining. The whole point of me doing that podcast, that show for three hours was because I just wanted to show how there was a situation where something is objectively true. The earth is round. And yet you still had all these people in the chat. If you go look, there's 80,000 views on his channel. And then 90% of the comments are that I was wrong. And at no point was I wrong. Nothing I said was wrong. There was one part where he said there were 33 section, 33 lines on a UN flag and there were 33 sections. So he just said it wrong, but like nothing he said was wrong. He's making fun of me today because I said that a human being and a, and a banana have 50% DNA in common. Do you want to know why I said that? Because it's fucking true because evolution is real. But people who don't believe in flat earth don't believe in dinosaurs, volcanoes or evolution. So that's the reason why uh, we get into that situation. Um, and then, like I said, I've got the whole thing with Adam Sosnick coming up. I'm going to probably be going back on Fresh and Fit. Um, yeah, it's funny. Rounder, she'll check. Uh, I'm also going to be doing something with Bradley. I think Bradley is going to have a fucking uh, moon landing denier on. Uh, and I'm going to be uh, uh, be debating him also. Cool. Now, uh, we're at the we're at the second hour. Any of you guys in MOA, if you're in Men of Action, can you write MOA in the chat right now? Write MOA in the chat. If you guys are in Men of Action. Okay, cool. I read all the super chats, just making sure. Uh, cool. There's a lot of people in there watching. Beautiful. If you guys are in MOA, go ahead and ask your questions. Go ahead and raise your hand if you guys are in Men of Action. Let's go. Justin, Justin, what's your question? Hey, Michael. So I had a question, you know, without getting too technical, just about trading. Okay. So... Yeah, I have my uh, Tastyworks account. I was looking at some of the other traders' trades, and I noticed that your profile was there. And I saw a lot of activity in SPX and SPY. Yeah. Uh, do you trade anything else, or are you typically just focused on that? Not, not. So I got really good at just. So the reason why I stuck with SPX is because I wanted to trade options on something that didn't move a ton, and I wanted to collect theta. And uh, SPX was a thing where. Number one, it's a commodity, so I get a 1256 tax break, meaning I play short-term long, or sorry, 60% long-term capital gains and 40% short-term capital gains. So I got a tax break. I, was, I remember it was like confusing to my accountant when she saw it. Um, and then the other reason why I sell it is because I just, I love, I love it as an income strategy, just sell put spreads in SPX. The other thing is like, they're big contracts, but they have a, a low spread. And if you, if you want an even lower spread, you can trade SPY, but you don't get the same tax breaks. Mm. Um, so that's why I chose those. I'm just using a theta collection strategy. I don't really, I'm really agnostic to which um, equity I'm using. I just like that equity because it's so liquid. Okay, great. And also, the finance pillar for MOA is unlocking for me in uh -huh. three days. Is there anything uh -huh. you'd recommend me do to prepare for that pillar? No, I mean, you could you could take whatever the intro course on, because Tasty now has a new intro course. I would take whatever the intro course is. And there it tells you to take options 101. You could take something else. Options 101 is outdated. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to replace those uh, modules at some point. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll okay. go ahead and look into that. Appreciate Love it. it. Love it. Gillian, what's your question? Oh, gotcha. So my question for you, Mike, is that I went to the last bikini competition 
had a wet Republic. It was awesome. Tristan got me in all good. My only, my question is for the guys in the way. We're losing audio. Guys, Gillian, say that again. Of way. Oh, sorry. You got me now? Yeah. Okay. Got you. So my question is if I keep coming to the events that I'm kind of a freeloader. So what can I do in this scenario to bring value? Is it just bring girls? Oh, uh, you know, like, like, I, I next... don't care, no, but, but you're not a freeloader. Like the club, the club wants you there. It's not a big deal. Like I don't, it's a bikini. Con. If you were to ask me, Hey, Michael, I was, I want to go to Dan Bilzerian's ignite party at the mansion. I would be like, yeah, bro, you're a freeloader. You're not getting in. It's a bikini competition. They want guys go there, buy a drink at the bar. Nobody gives a shit. It's not a big deal. This is so there, there's, there's two different, there's two different types of events. You'll notice for my birthday guys, my birthday, I usually have around 50 girls that'll show up. I usually, you know, cap it around 50. We'll have like a room afterwards. Where we'll all go to and just have like a little party, whatever. Um, sometimes it's my place, but you'll see like my birthday party is, oh, wow. We just posted. I didn't even see. We posted this. All right, cool. How's this doing? I haven't seen this yet. <laughs> Hilarious. Look at what he says. Look at the first one. Got any ladies without fake titties in Vegas? Do you see this? Like, do you see this? First off, the answer is you're a hater. Second off, the answer is, of course we don't. Why would we have girls without fake titties in Vegas? What a stupid concept. God, so dumb. It's so dumb. Yeah, we have too many bikini uh, photos. I told them to stop posting all the bikini photos. I'm trying to find a good photo for you guys. Yeah, there's way too much bikini shit on here. We're going to take a break from the bikini stuff for a while. Um, I'm trying to show one of my birthday. I'm trying to see if I can find one of my birthday. Here we go. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see it there. The beginning part is my birthday, but the, uh, the point is, uh, with, with, with this stuff is that like, uh, when I do these events where it's just the girls, it's just me and the girls, but everyone can't come to these. Okay. What I'll do is my birthday will have 50 girls come with me to my birthday. And then after my birthday, we'll have basketball two days later and all the guys can come to that. You guys are going to see this with you, especially if you live in New York or Los Angeles, Chicago, or Miami. You can't really have a nightlife scene presence and then have a bunch of guy friends, unless your guy friends are super wealthy. Uh, when I, when you go out to clubs in LA, you just can't bring guy friends with you. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, and so you, you're going to learn that the hard way. So the thing is, for me, coming to Wet Republic on a Friday, bring bring 40 guys. I don't care. They'll just let them all in. I just say, hey, I'm here for Sartain in the, in the bikini competition. The place is empty. They don't care. If you guys, door, somebody at the door. Uh, it, it, you can you can bring whoever the fuck you want. It's not that big of a deal. But if you try to do it, um, uh, if, if you try to do this when we do the Maxim party, they're going to be like, no, bro, you got to pay for this. Got you. Got you. Does that so make sense? Is it, yeah, that makes sense. Is that just because, like they just want to fill the club up? They don't have enough people, or why would they? Yeah. So, like, so imagine, imagine, imagine. In? Yeah, imagine Friday daytime. No, everyone's flying in. Right. Uh, uh, I see. So, because Friday daytime, everyone's flying in. There's, it's empty. So we. That's why the bikini competitions are always Friday daytime. Gotcha. So the club is yeah, empty. No, it's not empty. It's not empty. It's actually pretty busy because of the bikini competition. But it just imagine like I could pay four hundred grand for Tiesto, or I could pay thirty eight hundred dollars or five thousand dollars for a bikini competition. They're going to choose the bikini competition. It's still going to bring people in the door. So that's why we do bikini competitions on slower days at nightclubs. You'll notice it's like you won't really see unless it's a, like a slow like honky tonk whatever. Most bikini competitions are going to be on their industry night, their Thursday night. They're you know you understand what I'm saying? They're going to get a sponsor. The sponsor yeah, is going to put that up makes money. Sense. And it's just a way to get girls in the door. That's it. And it's really good social media play. For sure. Cool. Awesome, man. Yeah, I have some trouble with just your one audio. quick follow-up question. Go ahead. It, oh, shoot. You got me again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just one quick follow-up question is when we go to those events, maybe this is a dumb question, but I was like wondering how we get to know the staff. It's just, but the answer is just walk up to the bartender. Yeah, the the, answer, the answer is, the answer is mere exposure. You just go over and over again. And the other thing is you do, I know I say, treat them all the same, make them talk about themselves. That is true. What I mean by that is when you meet beautiful women, you treat them like everyone else. That's actually what it means. But it also means that one of the things is when I go up to imagine the difficulty of getting a phone number from 
a supermodel versus getting a number from a real estate agent. A supermodel yeah. is going to be like, who, who are you? Get the fuck away from me. A real estate agent is going to be handing his card to you before you even get to ask for his number. Did you understand? So when yeah. you're asking about talking to staff, staff is bored. You're a dude. Dudes talking to dudes is not hard. The, the dude, it, it's not a big deal. We, you, you're still stuck in the, you, you need to understand, Gillian, like you're taking this course. And if you have a fundamental understanding of the concept that you need to be useful in order for people to want to hang out with you, please understand. If you guys don't understand what, like what MOA is, this idea that you're a special snowflake, throw that shit out the window. None of you are special. People want to fuck with you because you're fucking useful. People want to fuck with you because you have value, because you have status. That is the reason why. We are hairless murder apes. The war internally, internally, you can have a high sense of self-worth. That's okay. Internally, you need to believe in yourself and have confidence. Don't have any issue with that. Internally, you can feel good about yourself. But uh, understand that opening your fucking chakras and opening your third eye and saying namaste is not going to move fucking units. Yeah, mm -hmm. Believing in yourself does not make sales. It does not fix the funnel. It does not hire the sales team. It does not make good advertisement. Good advertisement is shallow. It really is shallow and vapid. I have 60 seconds or 30 seconds to get your attention. Hairless murder apes. That's what we are. When you start thinking of us like, ooh, ooh, ooh. when you think of like fucking um, Vine, six seconds, like, oh my God, I'm going to go talk to this person. Bang. And everyone's like, ha, 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 Vine. Like how stupid is America? Vine, six second videos. And we were watching these things millions of times. Do you guys remember Vine? You know, that's how Jake and Logan Paul got popular. Same thing with King Batch. Like you had six seconds to be creative. So when you understand that, you understand internally, I still have an internal self-worth. Externally, though, I need to sell units. I need to make money, right? In externally, I need to have this physique. I need to have all these things uh, so people outward, here's the best way to say it. Internally, I can have self-esteem, but my value cannot be internal. My value ex is external because my value is what the, the bid, again, what is the value of the S&P 500? It's where the bid and the ask spread meet. And that's the value of the S&P 500. It's, de it's, it's defined by supply and demand. Your value is also, uh, um, your value is also dictated by supply and demand. But if you're overweight or if you're poor or if you're short or if you're ugly, I think we lost you, Michael, or maybe my internet cut out again, but yeah. Got you. Is, can someone make Mike a leader of this call? I don't think I can do it. Can you guys hear me? Yes. 
Okay, beautiful. Sorry about that. Yeah, we uh, the Wi-Fi got pulled out. Babe, tell me when the Wi-Fi is working again because I'm pulling the, I'm running this off my phone right now. So we don't we don't have a great signal. Um, okay, guys. So just going back to what we said before, it's the concept of um, what, what 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 remind me where we were before we left we left off. Yeah, you said mere exposure. Your value is come doesn't come from the internal stuff. It needs to be the specific what you bring to other people. You're not special snowflake. Yes, correct. You're, none of you are a special snowflake. I just need you guys to understand that like the thing that makes you... All right, guys, I need you to hold on for one second. I'm going to get cut off here. We're going to... Hey, is the Wi-Fi up and working again? Can somebody check on their phone? Sorry, we have a really unstable connection. I apologize. Unstable, like my life. Um, so going back to what you were saying before, the, the you're not a special snowflake and you need to have a, a grasp and an understanding. One of my favorite sayings is from Justin or for Justin Waller. Justin Waller says, I'm not afraid of a bad man. I'm afraid of a desperate man. And you'll notice that me and Justin and several of our friends, we're all friends with people we make money with. Because when we make money, we know that it's in our best interest to help ourselves and to help each other. And so in doing so, what like I had somebody ask me the other day, it's like, don't this whole hairless murder rape thing, doesn't it make you like not trust humanity? And I'm like, no, it just lets me know to trust humanity at, to, to look out for themselves. Having a conversation with somebody, you know, normal, they have got three square meals, you've got three square meals, they've got plenty of money, you got plenty of money. That's one conversation. Having a conversation with somebody who's desperate and starving and trying to make money to feed their kids, that's a completely different set. Uh, that's a completely different situation. It's a very stressful situation. So my friends are people I make money with. I help people that don't that I'll make money with, but my closest friends are people I work with and make money with and I can pull together for a common goal. Um what, what, no, Justin Waller says, if we can't make money together, fuck you. I don't, I don't need to be your fucking friends. I don't have time for that. I'm not at that level. I definitely have a lot of friends from back in high school. I don't make money with, and I'm still going to be friends with them. But for the most part, that's the way that I, that I would look at it is like, what value can you bring? If you bring more value, you're going to notice again, people will say, no, the world is full of peace and everyone's peaceful and nice. But yet notice when you guys get rich, how you get more friends. Hmm. Notice how guys, when you get rich. Girls never want you to put a condom on. Oh shit! Am I getting? Am I getting canceled? That's what, that's essentially what happened, huh? Wi-Fi is back, guys. Give me thirty seconds when I get cut off. I need you guys to put me back on, guys. Ready? Here we go. Um. All right, can you guys still see me? Yep. All right, beautiful. Got it. All right, it worked. All right, we switched back over to Wi-Fi. Um, cool. Does that answer your question, Gillian? Gillian? Yes, thank you. Uh, you're still a bit buggy, Mike. I think you just went out again. I think it needs to be It, it looks like you're the host now, Michael. It came up with. All right, here we go. I'm the host again. Thank gosh. Okay, sorry about that, guys. This is always going to be a problem. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, so I can't. I can't let allow myself to unmute myself because if I do, I guarantee you those guys are just waiting to to pounce on me. All right. Hopefully, we won't have this problem again. All right. Cool. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, of course, Christopher Ira. What's your question, Christopher?
Stand by, Christopher. Let me make sure you are uh, unmute. Unmute yourself, Christopher. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I just had a quick question about the, the reels thing. So I was uh, contemplating on doing reels, but I'm not trying to do reels like, like I want to say basic people do, you know, their hands, food, them walking, stupid shit. How, what are reels that I can do that would show actual value that could get attention to my page? Yeah. So the thing, Christopher, is in the beginning, because you don't have a, like you haven't done this before, the answer is to go on TikTok and to find what is trending. And like, you're going to need to start with using that for inspiration in the beginning. I don't, doesn't matter how good you think you are at this. You have to start that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Which I kind of guessed that, but I didn't know if there was like, I know yeah, but you, you should follow you, hold on, Christopher. If I were to, if you were to ask me, Michael, what is a way for me to go viral on reels that other people aren't doing? Why wouldn't I just be doing it, make billions of dollars, and then just fuck off with MOA? Like you're asking me a question that doesn't possibly have an answer, right? The answer is right. the answer's already been discovered. Either you come up, you the function of natural selection. What goes viral, people just pick, oh my God, this goes viral, this doesn't go viral. Okay. When it goes viral, then you have to look and see, okay, it, it, these tend, these things tend to go more viral than these things. When I talk about like sleep apnea, what's it going to go more viral? That or a video that says delusional 304 feminist gets destroyed by red pill. Which one's going to yeah, go more viral? Of course, but you guys know this. So like, but, but right. Christopher, you're like, what's the thing right. I can do that other people aren't doing? Chris, if I knew the answer to that, or if anyone knew the answer to that, you should pay them a hundred million dollars. Well, you know what I'm saying? my thing was, I like, think that I should like create reels on something like TikTok and stuff and then transfer that over to my Instagram to build that. Yeah, yeah well, of course, I, I do everything on everything. My reels go on Facebook. They go on threads. My reels go on Twitter. My reels go on reels. My reels go on TikTok. Uh, okay, so I guess I just need to follow the herd and then... Just copy and paste. Just copy so and paste do, until something. Well, I, I, let, let's skip around. I want you to read the 10,000 hour rule by Malcolm Gladwell. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. It's not the 10,000 hour rule. The name of the book is Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. In the book Outliers, he talks about the 10,000 hour rule. Okay. I think I've heard you reference it before. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, guys, you want to see something funny? Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to post something. So, so I posted, uh, I have a Russian post that I just posted today and the people who are, um, you're going to notice the people who comment on the Russian post, they're all bots. Hold on. Let me stop. Give me one second. Everyone look at all the Russian bots in the chat period. I wrote, everyone look at the Russian bots in the comments. None of them are real people. Watch how angry they're going to get. Yeah, so if you guys want you guys want a cheat code on how to go viral on uh, TikTok immediately, make a video criticizing the Russian military's invasion of Ukraine. Ru the Russian bots will comment. Thousands of them will comment on your thing. And they'll look like real people, but they're not real people. It's incredible. As soon as they see it, it'll trigger a bunch of bots. That's why I just posted one, an anti-Russian uh, thing on my Instagram. Just like uh, watch all the quotes that start happening. It's really funny. Watch all the comments. Um, anyway, Christopher, what was your question? Yeah, I was doing, like I said, mainly just trying to find traction, build up. Like I said, just a good amount of following. I know we don't care about the following, but I just want to have like a good amount just so it looks presentable christopher i also Besides, don't know what niche what niche are you in uh what niche yeah. oh you're talking about uh actually that's what i'm trying to find i guess that's the part i, I don't know 
Yeah. So you're, we're, we're, so you're, you're asking me question number 72 and you haven't answered question number one. Yeah. You don't know what your niche is. That's like, that's where things are messed up. Okay. So you're going to ask me a question. How do I go viral on reels? You don't have a niche. And then, and then you're like, how do I do it in a way that other people aren't doing it? Christopher, you're, you're trying to do step 76 and you haven't done step one yet. Learn how to make average content on reels first, and then we'll try to make the, the exemplary content. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Dennis and Blackett, what's your question? And ask him to mute and lower hand. Dennis, what's your question? And ask you to mute one more time. Dennison. Okay, I think we lost Dennison. It doesn't look like he, he looks like he's frozen on the screen. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here pretty quickly. If somebody doesn't have any questions, guys, make sure you go down to the right. I know we lost a couple of people when we had or Dennison, is that you? Can you talk now? Hey. Oh yeah. Dennison, what's your question? This was let me unmute for a little bit. Am I coming through all right? Yep. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I was thinking about um, getting uh, reels in two, but I was actually like wondering what the, um, is there like any copyright issues that you got to think about or anything like that when it comes to sharing certain people's reels? Like if you see an interview or if you like see a podcast or like something that they just wanted to grab a clip from, is there any, um, uh, yeah, is there any copyright issues? On that? social media, the answer is no. On social media, the answer is no. Does that, that make sense? Like just let, uh, well, I, 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 I heard a couple of different answers. I thought there was something about like maybe if someone had protected, um, like a uh, material. Yeah. So if they can, if they can prove that they trademarked a certain thing, so let's say you put like five minutes of a Game of Thrones thing, then yes, you're correct. Other than okay. that, then no. Okay. Huh. That, but other than that, no, we, I steal, 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 steal. I would love to see now on YouTube. If you use copyrighted music or you use stuff off YouTube, you'll get a copyright strike on right. uh, Instagram. You won't get anything. I've never gotten anything. The only time I've ever gotten anything is if I use copyright music before you could add music on there, you use the copyright music and then they take the music down. So they'd silence your video. Other than that, I've never seen anything. Okay. Now I know if you, like, again, if you did a 10 minute video of game of Thrones, they'll probably take that down. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So share away. Joel, what's your question? Hello, hello. How are you, Mike? Good. My question has to do with something you talked about earlier for a bit. It was about how people don't fuck with you unless you're useful to some extent. Yeah. Like, how do you cope with that? Obviously, like, there's. I think the answer to that might be present moments of of gratitude, but um, it's just such a hard pill to swallow. You know I mean? It is, isn't it? But, but we're not special. See, the thing is, though, think about how many people, uh, Joel, don't realize that they aren't special, and you yeah. just passed all of them. Think about all the people you know that think that they deserve a pension, that they deserve to be happy, that they deserve a good job, that they deserve a good relationship without working for it. You, Those people think they're special. They think that they're going to get their lot in life. It's going to improve because of fate or destiny. But you know better. And because you know better, you've already passed them. Make sense? Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. So to me, it's incredibly encouraging to know that most people think that, even though it's not true. I, it's incredibly liberating to know that no matter what I do, no one will care tomorrow. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's these dudes making these horrible videos about me on, uh, on, on Reddit. And I was looking, and nobody looks at them. Nobody watches the videos. And I was like, wow, how like they're getting more and more desperate. They don't have anything else to say about me. Um, and I just start thinking about it. And I'm like, man, how lucky am I? This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me is some people make some mean videos about me. It's, it's, it's terrific. So I just have so much gratitude for the position that I'm in. Oh, okay. Mike found my my second one has to do with my IG. I've got a couple uh -huh. picks and I kind of want to focus on just maxing out my IG as much as I can before I start hitting up my list. Um, you recommend that? I mean, obviously you always say something about how like more is always the yeah, answer. I, I, I would max out. I would max out your Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Thank you. 
Uh, but now I would, you could do both, but I would have at least nine photos that were pretty solid. And then, you, you know, you saw how much reels help you grow. If you want a good looking IG, you can do that with photos on the grid. If you want to grow your Instagram, I just showed you unequivocally, there is one way to do it. It is reels followed by reels, then reels, 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 and reels. That is how you grow your Instagram. Got it? James Got it. Wentes, what's your question? Unmute yourself, James. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good. Awesome, awesome. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, I'm making uh, six figures, and I'm trying to double that by um, going through digital marketing, uh, editing, and FBA. Do you think those are good routes to achieve that? Uh, editing is not editing is a good way. Like if you start a business editing, and you have other editors work for you, and you scale it, and you can get some good clients. Yes. Copywriting, yes. FBA is, a, is it, you need some serious instruction. You could talk to uh, Leo, Leonard DeBeer. He's in, in MOA. He teaches a course on FBA. FBA, though, is one of these things where like you have to really push through when things get hard. Got you. I also had another question on networking. Um, I, I have a friend, uh, not a close friend, but he's a good associate. He's a millionaire. However, uh, whenever I hang out with them, it's just for fun. Like it's just fun things. Yeah. Uh, it's never about money. So I yeah. was wondering if, if that's still a viable relationship. Yeah, no, like I buy stuff for my friends all the time. Yeah. yeah well, you know, it's funny. When, I was listening uh, to Wes Watson. Go ahead. I'm saying when we hang out, there's no uh, money talk involved. It's more fun. And I'm like more interested in making the, money. Then than ask him questions about making money. I find it flattering when you guys ask me these questions. No, I, I do. It's just he kind of like brushes it off because he just then, wants then that's to have not fun. The, then that's not a good mentor for you. And you don't know. Right, and right, Just right. because he's okay, rich, cool, just, cool. then find a different mentor. Yeah. Dude, gotcha, there's gotcha. so many books you can read. The Millionaire Fast okay. Lane, $100 million offer. There's so many books you can read about how to make money that uh, having one guy who doesn't want to talk about it, just next. Okay. Next, next, cool. next. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank you. Mr. Daxis, what's your question? Hello. What's going on, What's brother? What's going on, brother? Not much. So it's me again. I uh, This question is going to be quick, simple, and brief. It's two-parted, but it's quick, simple, and brief. Roger. Michael, Roger. you have friends that are DJs, right? Pretty high up there. Do I? Do I? Yeah. Not too Not many. Too I have many. a few, friends, a few that friends that are DJs. That... Okay. Um. The, the question is, bottom line is this, all right? Young guy can't afford the program, not going to be able to afford it anytime soon. If I wanted to get as close to an MOA lifestyle as possible, can just pursuing life as a DJ be the closest viable substitute? Uh, no, I, I think being a club promoter would be the closest viable substitute. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. So go club promoter, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. DJ. But, uh, it's hard. it's hard. You have to grind every day. You have to talk to people every day. You have a quota that you have to meet. You have to be on social media. You have to be like physically good looking, in shape, dress well. Being a club promoter is like you're getting paid to sort of do maybe like the first fifteen percent of MOA. Yeah, I would I would say that. There's a lot of club promoters in MOA, by the way. There's a lot. Michael Buy up in New York. There's a lot of club promoters in MOA. Now, if I were going to say who's most overrepresented, it would definitely be pilots. There's a lot of pilots in this program. A lot of doctors. Um, we have a lot of engineers. Uh, we have some educators. Those are like the most common professions. And we have a few, uh, several accountants that are in this program too. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, that's pretty much. So the only problem with being a club promoter is I live in a small area. So that's not even really a vocation. Um, yeah. knowing, knowing that is the best, you think the best thing I could do is I mean, I guess yeah, I, being a DJ is not going to fix that problem either. Like you're going to have to move or you're going to have to get involved in something virtual where you're, where you're with all these people. Okay. So move or get involved, something virtual. Got it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. All right, man. Caleb, what's your question? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. What's going on, Caleb? Yeah. Go college student here. Um, I've heard you talk about sliders before, you know, get your finance to this level relationship to this level. I'm curious what financial point we should start worrying about leveling up our social circle. Um, I think it's um, to the point where you don't have to worry about if you're living off, like 
90% of your income, I don't think you're doing well enough. A lot of people would say 150, 150,000 a year or having, a, no, I'm sorry, 150,000 in the bank. Some people would be like, that's too little. I think if you're a college student and you had $150,000 in the bank, that's really good <laughs> actually. Um, so, so it just kind of depends on, on where you are. But for me, it was like, I, I remember I was managing a strip club and I was making, guys, remember this is 1999, making like $52,000 a year. That was actually pretty good. And uh, <laughs> taxes, <laughs> it was all cash. <laughs> Um, so it was, you know, it was back then that was really good money. So, um, you know, I was in that situation. I worked on, I talked to, with girls a lot, but here's the problem because I was working in a strip club, my highest level of income was set. I could never make any more money than that. And so that's why I got out of it, joined the military, learned some skills, and then got out here and created a scalable business. Um, I don't think you ever can need to stop worrying about leveling up money. I think you can do both. And I think learning social circle game, which is kind of like an, uh, an allegory, to um, MOA, social circle game, is, is, is probably the fastest. This is a huge, huge misunderstanding. People think cold approach takes less time and social circle takes more time. It's the opposite. Cold approach definitely takes more time. Um, social circle takes less time. And it takes, it's like a reverse hockey stick. It takes progressively less time as, as you go further. Like in, in order for the rock to work on his image on a daily basis, he has to do progressively less work per day. Does that make sense? Yeah. In order, in order for Dave Chappelle to work on his, like for his, his, his image overall, he, he actually, it's more work in the beginning when he was a teenager. And then he's in, uh, you know, Robin Hood, men of tights and all these other, you know, uh, these movies. And then he has his comedy specials and the Dave Chappelle show he's working his ass off. And then it becomes progressively easier over time for him to stay famous. And that's kind of how social circle game works. All right, thank you. That answers the, it. the amount of time it takes me to like get a group of people to go to a club with me is so incredibly like 15 minutes now. Whereas before it took a lot of effort. Now it takes progressively less every time I do it. Uh Tao Yao, what's your question? Hey Mike, can you hear me? Sure can. Um, I don't know if I should ask this question tomorrow since this is a free call, but um how like I think Bashar has already asked the same question, but what is the best way in terms of like social circle game to shoot my shot with one of the models from my photo shoots? She came she came to my photo shoots uh mm -hmm. twice now. For twice and yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, I mean, so the thing is you just invite her to something else and then she's gonna say yes or no. But the, the problem is how what are they again? I'll I'll debate this on blue in the face. Women do not sleep with you because of your intent, they sleep with you because of your status. You're perceived like they're or I'll wait. We're saying status from our standpoint, from their standpoint is like how attracted they are to you. They don't see it as status necessarily, right? They just see, they, 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 like from our standpoint, it's like that guy has a, a stronger build and broader shoulders. From their standpoint, they just feel attracted to him. So they don't, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, the, the thing is when you're asking the question, if you're doing enough social media wise, physique wise, you know, uh, the way you speak, like just your whole persona where she finds you uh, interesting and attractive. Again, breaking rapport, charisma, uh, breaking rapport through disqualification, all the things that we talk about in MOA, treat them all the same, make them talk about themselves. If you do all those things and then you ask her to go to the next thing with you and she says no, meaning you start the compliance loop, then the compliance loop is dead at like step two, which means, which is you. And here's what you do, yeah, Tal. Over the course of 50 girls, if every time you try the compliance loop and it stops at level two, that means you have a problem at level two. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, I, I know some clients are like, they get all the way to level 9.5 and then the compliance loop shuts down. What does that tell you? That tells you something's wrong at 9.5. Something goes wrong once they go into the bedroom. See what I'm saying? Correct. Okay, that's a pretty good point. So ba basically, you just run them through compliance loop and you want to increase your status. That's why you want to kind of improve like your overall, like you, you cannot have a hole in your game, basically. Yeah. Um, another question is logistical type of questions because I feel like- But you think that they have this incredible- Keep going. Uh, I feel like um, it's really hard to compromise with a tech job with a social circle. Sometimes why? Um, because uh, most positions are here in Seattle. If I move to California, then I will have to pay a lot more taxes. So it's more like you know you you can never have a perfect solution. Yeah, there is no perfect solution. Um, I agree for tech jobs. I don't know why you can't do a tech job remotely. 
it's uh it's just really hard to find a remote jobs nowadays ever since uh you know the pandemic ended um got it yeah um okay um i will tell you a couple of things so uh i don't think it, it it's you can still have a social circle in the state of washington that is not the problem um, absolutely you're just right it, it, are you worried about your coworkers looking at what you're doing and then like judging you no, they don't judge me at all. The problem is, uh, I last time I brought twenty girls to a nightclub to my com table, and then the VIP host uh, still charged me three hundred thirty dollars, and she promised to give me the second bottle for free, but she didn't. So that was the only club that somewhat give out uh, Tau, some Tau, com things. So, Tau, Tau. so the couple of things I don't know if it, it's that place, but I also it's your demeanor personally, Tao, and like when I talk to you, and a lot of times guys will say, "Well, it's just because I'm talking to you, Michael." I don't get that energy from you. I don't feel like I don't feel an edge or a fire when I listen to you talk. And it's not because I'm, I'm guessing English is your second language. Yes. And that's not because of it. It's not because of an accent. I don't feel a fire in you. I don't feel like I feel this is when I listen to you talk. I went there and they charged me $330 after they said they were not going to charge me $330. I don't know why these club promoters are taking advantage of me. I know exactly why they're taking advantage of you. It is clear to me why they're taking advantage of me. Like you, your face looks asleep, not asleep, literally asleep, but like not awake. The f this is not moving. This is stiff. There's nothing happening. There's no smiling. There's no emoting at all from you. Tao. Did you understand? Yes. And so because, because you even answer it that way, you go, yes. Like you have to break out of that or uh, that, that's where you're going to start having some of these issues. When you asked before about the girl, like coming to hang out with you, watch yourself on camera right now. Do you look interesting? Does mm. Tao look like I'm going to have a real fucking interesting conversation with him? Like you're kind of seeing it. Is right. your haircut, is your haircut as relevant as it could be? Still working on it. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Like there's a bunch right. of things you have to work on. And right. if you don't do those things, then what'll happen is you'll just go through the compliance loops and you're going to keep getting stuck at one or two or three. Right. Yeah, number one is, hey, point. can I, hey, number one is, hey, can I get your email? And 10 is, hey, can you go ahead and send me a, a payment thing for $10,000 for this course? That's one. And this is 10. Number one is, hey, girl, can I get your number or what's your name? And number 10 is, hey, come back with me to my place. See? You guys are getting stuck at one or two or three. And you're like, Michael, I do not know why these girls do not think that I am very attractive. But that, that's why you watch yourself on camera, Tal. Right. Guys, you have to get yeah, guys. I want you to think about something crazy. Again, if you are a homosexual person, I'm not trying to chastise you whatsoever, fully in favor, whatever you want to do. But if you're a straight man, I want you to imagine someone putting a dick in you. Oh, God. Now, imagine being a woman and you have to choose which one of these penises go inside of you. God, oh, God. Imagine how fucking picky you'd be. Now look at you guys. Look at how you talk and dress and act. What? Why doesn't she want to go out with me? Why would she, anyone want to go out with you? And it's not because of your physical attractiveness, guys. It's literally, there's no emoting. There's no expressiveness. There's no upper body muscle. There's no ambition. There's nothing. Why would she want to? Just think. Oh, oh God. Oh. Think about that. How picky would you be? Okay. <laughs> Gillian says, picky, line them up. But Michael, um, so it seems like for the first problem I have, the best solution is to just watch myself on camera and report myself and just kind of see what where the improvements are. Yeah. Okay. And for the logistical issue, do you think hope like throwing our own party is the better solution? But that's it uh, like yeah. I mean, I mean, for if you've been in the program for a while and you've gone to other people's parties, then the answer is yes. Okay, I have. Beautiful. I love it. Last question. We're going to go with Alex. Alex, what's your question? Uh, hold on. So Alex, go ahead and unmute yourself. No, I'm sorry. That's the wrong Alex. Give me one second. I, I am muted the wrong Alex. Uh, Alex, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, sure can. Uh, for some reason, I cannot hear you. 
Stand by. Okay, I can hear you now. Hello? Good, you can hear me good. Mike, uh, all right, so I'm in MOA. I did uh, take your advice and I checked my testosterone level. And I know you're not, uh, you're not like a practitioner or a physician or whatnot, but uh, just wanted to share that information with you to, to see if, if, if it's needed or not. So the results for testosterone for me was 635. Okay. And for estrogen was, T, it was in the 300s. So I talked to the doctor, at, like, I mean, the one that I got was 37, but he said, like, you have to, uh, I don't know, you multiply it by 100 or something. They do it. Okay, but you, you, so you need to lower your estrogen, right? That's what he said? No, no, he didn't say that. Like, the number that I got from him was 635 for testosterone and 37 for estrogen. Yeah, that's a lot of, that's a lot of estrogen, dude. 37 is a lot. Uh, did you go, okay, real quick. Did you go to an endocrinologist, a urologist, or a TRT clinic? I went to a clinic that does, uh, like, does tests, like sexual tests. No, no, you went to an STD. Yeah, no, that's not what, I need you to go. I don't know why it's really hard for you guys to grasp this. Go to a TRT clinic or an HRT, hormone replacement therapy. Okay, well, that this kind of clinic doesn't like we don't have a specific TRT clinic here in Colombia because I'm in Bogota in Colombia. I, I'm almost guarantee you do. Hold on, because uh, they asked I'm, I'm, and, I'm and they referred me to this one. I specifically asked to do tests for testosterone and estrogen levels. Um, hold on. hair transplant. Sexual, yeah, masculina, yeah. It's it's called Salud Sexual Masculina. Yep, that's that's the one that I went to. Okay, so and that really they thought it was fine for you to have estrogen levels that high. They didn't all, like offer you anything. I mean, what is too high for estrogen though? Like thirty seven. Uh, you high? you you should you should talk to them. You should talk to them. Oh, uh, there's also a place online. Chris Adams will talk about it. Uh, you can you can get this have stuff sent to you. Uh, I would try to find another doctor, Alex. I would. Okay. And now listen, the hold on. One other thing, Alex, if you feel fine, then don't worry about it. Have, being at 600, how old are you, Adam? Uh, Alex? 32. 32, 600. That part's fine. It's just your estrogen levels seem a little high to me. Mine okay. was at 29, and I was like, that's way too high. Yours at 37. I, I mean, it's not going to kill you, which is why nobody's going to recommend you do anything. And there's a lot of people that'll be like, don't take a blocker. I would just want to know why it's so high. That's the only thing I would do. Okay. So what I talked to the doctor about it, um, I had the consultation after the fact. He said that 600 is healthy. And now I know what, what they say it's healthy. Like 600, 600 is healthy. To, no, 600 is fine. 600 is fine. But like, I mean, we want it to be optimal. We want it to uh, be I like mean, a, yeah, you want to be op if, if you want to get on TRT, and by the way, your estrogen levels are going to go up even more when you do that if you don't fix this. But if you want to get on TRT, I know um, Brad Lee's like at 1100. Yeah. Yeah. So get it at a thousand because like I kept telling him like I want to increase it I want to get it at a thousand and he kept t telling me about the side effects. Yeah. So uh, what side effects? What did he say? I mean, he's like, uh, you know, like hard at like hard problems. Yeah, make make millions problems. of dollars. Fuck your super hot girlfriend. Yeah, there's horrible side effects. They're terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, uh, I can't exactly. remember. I can't think of. I can't imagine all the strokes I had this week. The fuck no. You know what's bad? You know what'll give you a heart attack? Big fat. That'll be give you a heart attack. Uh, 1100 is not yes it's it's a little bit super physiological there are side effects but like at 900 it, does he think that's bad i mean i don't think so i don't think it's bad at around a thousand uh i mean i've seen people who want it at a thousand and you're right it could be it could be too too much but i'm, I'm just saying like like if you want to go higher up to 900 you can hey by the way this is all different for different people so i can't give you advice here i need you to go talk to a doctor did the doctor prescribe anything for you when he saw you at 600? He said, no, it's, well, you're fine. The doctor, he just discouraged me from doing any testosterone. He's like, just just work out, sleep, you know, the normal shit. Yeah, right? I, at 600, you're fine. At 600, at the age of 32, I, I can't say that he's wrong. But if you decided one day, I was like, no, man, I want big muscles, then you could go get more testosterone. But you can also get that from uh, like just getting protein and, and working out like regularly. Uh, you, right? you, like, from protein you and working boost. out, you're going to go up maybe 40, 50 points. From testosterone, you're going to go up five, 600 points. Do you think it's worth experimenting? Like 
experimenting and, and seeing how you're 32. Like, I mean, I, I'll tell you, I would, but I, I can't tell you to do that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. All right. Uh, Mike, another question. So I'm in MOA, like almost three months in the game. I'm doing great. Like I got all the results and stuff. Now I just have a specific question about fame, like okay. doing things like projecting fame, like talking to newspapers, the media, I don't know, just to get into like to a, a lot of eyeballs having that kind of mindset do you think that's uh i know there's no shortcut with moa moa is a shortcut but like fame is the double thing you know the the exponential thing do you think it's it's worth that's probably going to be yes but like seeking that that specific you know just getting famous okay. on a specific so what, one of the things that social media did is that there's a middle class of fame now and i would aim for that um, do you understand that tony okay uh uh Tom Cruise is famous, okay? Ed Milet is the middle class of famous. Andy Frisella is like a middle class of famous. Does that make sense? Makes sense. There's a middle class of fame. Like in the middle class of fame, I would be like a C or D list celebrity. Right? Okay. A middle class of fame, uh, an A list celebrity would be like Gary Vaynerchuk. In the middle class of fame, he's an A-list celebrity, but he's not really an A-list celebrity. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, there's a the influencer famous. That's exactly what Kareem's saying. Now, here's the thing: to young, impre- to young, attractive women, they don't care. They, it's the same to them. So it doesn't give you a lot of extra points to be like, fa- like social media influencer, famous guy. I, I think. I, mean, I like think it, you actually. I think you actually get more points. I mean, who Vince Vaughn or Dan Bilzerian? Who got more girls? Yeah. It's not even close. So influencer famous is actually more effective for a younger generation. Gotcha. Cool. Thank you, Mike. All right. Awesome, guys. Hey, thank you guys so much for doing this. I appreciate it. Uh, had a really great call. For those of you who ha- are not aware or you're c- curious, you're like, man, I want to learn more about this. I'm going to ask you, there's no excuse whatsoever for you guys to not do this. If you've heard about anything that you like in this course, I want you guys to do me a huge favor and I need you to click the link in, in um, right there in the chat. And for those of you who are watching us on YouTube, I need to click you to click the link right here in the chat. And when you click on that link, it's going to take you to the free school server. In the free school server, there are four things. There's a lot of things, actually. There's hundreds, there's thousands of guys in there commenting. The main four things is the uh, the free course that we have there that has the first four steps of MOA, the book list. Okay. It's going to have the schedule of events and it's going to have the Instagram testimonials. That's that will all be there, all accessible to you. There's and, and the free course is incredibly valuable. There's also a bunch of guys in there. If you want to meet up with other dudes in your city, like share lists, whatever, you can also do that in the MOA free school server. Uh, please guys make sure you check that out and make sure you go to that uh, ASAP. Um, if for those of you who are just like, hey man, no nah, man, I just want to join MOA. Hold on a second, did I? Uh, if for those of you who are just like, I just want to join MOA. Well, forget that. Um, I, you, know, you just want to skip skip the nonsense. Just go ahead and click this link right here, or some of the guys have an affiliate codes. You can you can no, that's wrong. <laughs> forget that. Give me one second, guys. For those of you who just want to learn about the program, just go ahead and click here. If you want to set up a uh, set up a call with any of the the guys for Men of Action, there's several guys in the course right now. Uh, there's over 600 guys in the course right now, and they can give you testimonials. There's also the Instagram testimonials, and there's testimonials on that page that I just sent you. If you guys are interested in learning about more about MOA, for those of you who have no idea what MOA is, I'll just give you a, a quick description. If you guys know who Jocko Willick is, he's like a he teaches leadership studies. So just imagine if it was a leadership study course, but they also handled dating. Imagine uh, Dan Fleischman. Dan Fleischman is everyone, every, it's, he's your favorite influencer's favorite influencer. Everyone in LA 
everyone in this scene knows Dan Fleischman, even though he's not super famous. But a lot of us get our jobs through Dan Fleischman. We get our find our sponsors through Dan Fleischman. We find our girlfriends through Dan Fleischman. Dan Fleischman is the ultimate connector. I teach what kind of what Dan Fleischman does, but I combine it with kind of what Dan Bilzerian does. And I combine it with kind of what Ty Lopez does. All those things, we take lessons from them. But the overarching thing is that we base all of these anecdotal things and we cover it with a layer of science. And that science is called evolutionary psychology. We use concepts in evolutionary psychology, sociobiology, evolutionary biology, and we use those concepts and we describe human behavior based on those concepts, not just mating behavior, but just behavior in general. And we discover that networking is an evolutionary, evolutionary adaptation, meaning your ancestors were rewarded for networking with other people. And so when you are a master networker, everyone gets their job through you. Everyone meets their sponsors through you. Everyone meets their mentors through you. And everyone finds their girlfriends through you. And that's the kind of person that you become when you join the Men of Action Mentoring Group. So guys, make sure you join our school server or you go to moamentoring.com and join us. And I will see all of you guys who are in the program in 24 hours. I'm going to see you at four o'clock on Tuesday.